good afternoon everybody uh, this is uh, four foundations of mindfulness uh, retreat you have uh, four foundations of mindfulness discourse in front of you i suppose the book the entire discourse uh, as uh, samner uh, piratana mentioned last evening uh, you have a uh, very beautifully printed uh, discourse with uh, verbatim english translation and a paraphrase of pali words i think in your spare time you may look at this discourse very carefully i'm going to give talks on uh, this discourse every day till the end of the retreat since uh, we want to have this uh, uh, retreat on this particular discourse this is the sort of manual of uh, instructions on uh, mindfulness meditation and therefore uh, i think i thought it would be better if i continue i i give all the dhamma talks uh, so that uh, there will be a, a continuity while in other retreats i we share dhamma talks we have uh, asked others also at the monastics to give dhamma talks but during this retreat i would give all the dhamma talks because the sut because i want to explain this sut in detail this discourse as you see in the book was delivered at a place called kuru for uh, in a village called uh, kamma sadamma the word kamma sadamma sometimes is spelled as kamma sadamma some places kamma sadamma you can see both dhamma and dhamma so sometimes uh, when you read you might uh, if you come across these two different versions you might uh, confuse wonder which is correct according to the commentary both seem to be correct kamas uh, dhamma dhamma is uh, tamed purusha dhamma in when you say uh, when we talk when we uh, recite the qualities of the buddha we come across the word purusha dhamma sarathi we don't say purusha dhamma sarathi there is a simple uh, low what do you call uh, unstressed d purusha dhamma dhamma is his teaching purusha dhamma devo means uh, one who train people similarly dhamma in this discourse kamma dhamma people 
who were trained, trained, and their training technique was work. They are workaholics, and they were working, spending their time to keep themselves preoccupied so that the mind will not be become like devil's workshop. Make it make their lives very confused with all kinds of things. Their work was work kept them in a proper track and they were disciplined in doing their work. In that sense, Purusha Dhamma is correct. Other sense is Purusha Dhamma, that they follow the Dhamma that uh, uh, kept them, kept their mind preoccupied. So each, e either way, it's according to the commentary, uh, is okay, acceptable. So we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, Buddha gave this sermon to that, in that village, to those people in a state called Kuru. Then it is said, Tatrako Bhagava Bhikkhu Amantesi. There the Buddha addressed the bhikkhus. There was no mention of bhikkhus in anywhere in that particular area when Buddha went there. He delivered this sermon to uh, uh, these people in Kuru. He selected that particular area because it is said people in that area were very intellectual. There are several other deep, difficult discourses like Mahanidana Sutta, which also is difficult discourse delivered to same, in the same area, maybe for same people. While uh, Venerable uh, uh, Ananda was, of course, with the Buddha at that time. Anyway, there are several such difficult suttas Buddha delivered in that area. And also it is said that uh, people were so much uh, uh, deeply uh, committed to the meditation practice that uh, whenever they met in uh, sometimes, you know, women uh, met near uh, wells, you know, those days people went to wells to drink water. They did not have uh, running water, you know, tap water. Uh, like now, so they bring, uh, they brought the water from uh, wells. When they assembled around the well, normally that is the place people gossip. But in that particular area, when uh, women assembled around wells, one would ask uh, another woman, sister or aunt or whatever, uh, what kind of uh, meditation do you practice? What aspect of mindfulness do you practice? If uh, the other lady said, well, sister, or niece, or whatever, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm so busy with my family, my kids, my husband, my job, I don't have time to meditate. Then this woman who asked the question will reprimand her. Shame on you. <laughs> you are wasting your time, your life. This is the precious life. 
she must spend just like you know scolding with compassion with affection so they would uh, advise encourage each other to practice meditation so this is the kind of these are the type of people that Buddha found in that area and therefore it was uh, I think Buddha might have thought it was quite appropriate to deliver a sermon like this and also because of their seriousness in the practice of meditation indiscriminately he used the word bhikkhu otherwise the word bhikkhu is used for ordained monastics ordained male monastics uh, but in this case anybody who practices meditation especially mindfulness meditation is called a bhikkhu so bhikkhu amantesi he addressed the bhikkhus and straight away uh, he began to give the sermon when they responded to Buddha's uh, address uh, that is uh, because there is only one way when uh, the word one way uh, seems to be a little uh, uh, seems to be unacceptable uh, to many people especially when we think of the Buddha's uh, endless open heartedness uh, his supremely enlightened state of mind to use the word the only way appears to be uh, unacceptable for some people so sometimes uh, because he himself has said in some other places that if somebody says uh, this is the only way and others are uh, incorrect wrong ways and so forth uh, that kind of statement makes one uh, narrow minded or fanatical so people sometimes find it difficult to uh, accept this but when we look at the word very mindfully carefully and Buddha used it in a very specific sense uh, and not only here in many other places Buddha used this is the only way only way for what when we find when we look at the purpose then the word only way is not that inappropriate there are many ways for many different things many directions to go in many in various to various places he said the going to heaven is one way going to nibbana is another way and here you know, ha having mentioned this is the only way he also mentioned only way for fulfilling for, for achieving the following purpose for that purpose or for those purposes this is the only way what are the purposes? Sattanang Visuddhya for the purification of beings this is the only way what is this only way? 
the only way is the entire teaching of the Buddha. The way this only way, uh, when you look at the discourse, we can see uh, in in uh, Dhammapada also we read eso maggo nathanyo dasanasa visuddhya etam mitum me patipadyata mara setam pamochanam because this is the only way dasanasa visuddhya for the dasana and visuddhi dasana means vision visuddhi means purification Vision means wisdom, purification means uh, concentration. That means for both samatha and vipassana, this is the only way. Why samatha and vipassana? Uh, Samatha or tranquility calm the mind, calm our greed. Samatha is concentration. The purpose of concentration is to calm our mind by weakening, suppressing, overcoming greed. And vipassana is a method that uh, uh, arouses our wisdom, insight. So we need both tranquility and insight in order to achieve our purpose. Dasana Savisuddhya for vision and purification, there is only one way. When we say purification and vision, uh, we will see in the discourse later on when we expand it, uh, when you go through the whole discourse later on, this is just an introduction. When we uh, complete or perfect our vision and purification, we have, we would have completed the entire practice of the Buddha's teaching. In fact, this discourse is uh, is, a, is sort of a nutshell of his entire teaching. Everything that Buddha taught is in this discourse. We will see that when you go through. And therefore, uh, when he said this is the only way, he was talking about the entire teaching that he gave for 45 years. We will see that later on. And also, the, this is the only way, it means the only way of, uh, the way, way always is used in Buddhist uh, Buddhist teaching for the noble eightfold path. Way means the path, the uh, the road. That is the map. So, the word only way means the noble eightfold path, which includes four noble truths and everything else he taught. So, how can we say? that the word only way is inappropriate. And he gave the purpose. Sattanam visuddhya for the purification of beings. And uh, that purification uh, is given in seven steps in another discourse in Majjhima Nikaya called Ratha Vinita 
Sutta, where uh, step, seven steps of purification uh, are given, that is called Satta Visuddhi. And uh, whole uh, book has been written by Venerable Buddha Gosa on this purification called Visuddhi Magga, path of purification. So, that is one purpose, Sattanam Visuddhya. Why won't, why did he want beings to gain purification? Why, what, why does he want beings to gain purification? As I mentioned last evening, mindfulness uh, practice and uh, practice of the Noble Eightfold Path is the way of purification, purifying the mind of all psychic irritants. And therefore, he said, this is the only way. Sometimes we say, this is the only direct way. If you practice various other things, you may uh, achieve many different things and you may delay your attainment. But if you practice this, since it is a direct way, your achievement, your success will be faster. Then, for the, this is the only the direct way for purification of beings. And then, Soka Paridhavanam Samatikkamaya, you can see that in the text. This is the only way for overcoming sorrow and lamentation. How can we overcome sorrow and lamentation by practicing this? We can see sorrow and lamentation, uh, there's a cause for sorrow and lamentation. What is the cause of sorrow? I think uh, that, is <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> that is very true. Birth is the cause of everything. <laughs> uh, when you gave that answer, everything is included in that. Uh, cause of sor uh, sorrow and lamentation uh, is uh, definitely birth and also immediate cause is uh, greed and clinging craving. When we are not mindful, uh, whenever uh, there is a pleasantness or pleasant experience, pleasant sensation, we cling to it and we justify it. We even get upset when somebody says, don't cling, don't cling to anything. People are very upset. They say, how can I live without clinging to my family, my children, my wives, my husbands, my parents, my property, my country? I have an attachment, affection. We have many beautiful euphemistic terms to uh, mellow it down. Uh, our uh, and also 
to justify, to uh, reject uh, the accept the acceptance of uh, non clinging you won't you don't want it and therefore we may use many many different terms <coughs> people don't we don't have to feel guilty about it we just have to accept this reality that because of our clinging attachment we end up in sorrow and lamentation uh, I don't have to explain this in great detail. All of us experience it. When you have someone you, whom you love very, very much, when all of a sudden that person dies, just imagine the amount of sorrow, lamentation, pain you will have. It is purely because of that attachment. When we practice mindfulness, uh, every moment, we practice mindfulness, we see this reality of impermanence. So we mature, we grow in it. Our mind becomes conditioned to accept this reality. As I mentioned last year, it is a kind of brainwashing. We do our own brainwashing by we, we wash our brain of these impurities. So, Buddha said this is the only way that is the practicing of the Noble Eightfold Path. Here he mentioned only ways uh, four foundations of mindfulness. When he talk about four foundations of mindfulness, effort is included and understanding is included. We cannot cultivate mindfulness without effort and understanding. When these two included, the rest of the Noble Eightfold Path also included. So, without any hesitation we must say this is the only direct way of purifying our mind and overcoming sorrow and lamentation. And if you have any doubt, keep practicing. Keep practicing and deepen your understanding, deepen your insight, wisdom, in order to weaken your doubt about this only, only direct way. Then he said the third purpose to overcome grief. Soka paridhavana samatikma dukkha domana sanangathangamaya. Suffering and disappointment. To overcome suffering and disappointment we practice the four foundations of mindfulness. Suffering, the cause of suffering also is uh, uh, greed. Uh, of course, uh, birth is the fundamental cause. <laughs> uh, when we uh, practice four foundations of mindfulness, we uproot the cause and thereby we will not have pain and disappointment. That also we will see in the discourse. <coughs> then for only way, the four foundations are the only way for Nyaya sa adhigamaya, nyaya or nyaya is a method, a system. The method is a method of eight noble path or noble eightfold path. Adhigama means realizing. 
this discourse is so succinct, so precise, so powerful <coughs> that Buddha said uh, this is one of the three discourses that Buddha gave uh, guarantee. Uh, guarantee of attainment. You can real you can understand how powerful this discourse is. Um, at the end of the discourse, uh, he gave a uh, guarantee that if somebody practices this discourse, this these instructions exactly as they are given, without leaving out one single aspect, if one practices for seven days, seven days, one can attain full enlightenment or attain the third level of enlightenment. And if you do not attain in seven days, you can attain it in seven years. <laughs> Buddha gave seven years first and reduce it to seven days. But I like to recommend you to try to attain in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> if you cannot attain seven days, then you can extend the, you know, take some, uh, apply for, you know, grace <laughs> to extend your time. Keep extending up to seven years. Since it is so powerful, Buddha said this is the only way and direct way for treading the path. Adhigama, adhigama means realizing. Nyayas adhigama means uh, realizing or gaining wisdom, knowledge. And finally, Nibbana Sachikiriya for the realization of Nibbana, attaining Nibbana. All those who have attained enlightenment in the past followed the four foundations of mindfulness. And all who want to attain, who will attain, who can attain full enlightenment now must follow the four foundations of mindfulness. And all those who will attain enlightenment in the future will have to follow the four foundations of mindfulness. And Buddha said, no other way can we attain these states. Why is that? What is the power of this particular discourse? Friends, just imagine, just imagine, from the moment we wake up in the morning till we go to bed, if we remain mindful all the time, every moment, every second, do you think there would be any moment that mind would be polluted? No way. Our, there is no room for the mind to get polluted, corrupt, impure, filled with defilements. No chance. If we spend 24 hours from morning till evening, maybe 12 hours, assuming. And if we stay with mindfulness every moment for 24 hours, just imagine how clean our mind will remain, pure it, it will be. Just imagine if we spent 
two days, 48 hours, like that, and three days, four days, and so forth. Therefore, it is not impossible only if this is the condition, big if we remain mindful every moment, every day. It is not impossible for us to attain enlightenment in seven, at least to attain uh, the third level of enlightenment, as Buddha said. Because the function of mindfulness is to repel defilements. It repels. It does not let defilements invade the mind. Why and how? All our six senses are well guarded. And Buddha said, uh, this mind, our mind is luminous. It becomes corrupt by adventitious invading defilements. That does not mean mind is uh, totally, completely pure, but the possibility of purification is there and also possibility of corrupting the mind is there. Mind is shining, that shi shining nature is an indication of purification. But that uh, shining mind can become corrupt because of adventitious defilements. And Buddha said, Thang asutava putujano napa janati. Pabhasari medam bhikkhya chittang, tancha ko agantuke upakilesi upakilitang, tang asutava putujano napa janati. Tasma asutava sa putujana sa chitta bhavana nama nati. This mind is luminous, but it will be corrupted by invading defilements an ordinary person who is not educated in the dhamma does not know this and therefore that person will not practice meditation chitta bhavana means uh, uh, development of concentration Panya bhavana is developing mindfulness. Why somebody does not cultivate the mind through concentration? Because that person, Buddha said, does not understand that the mind can be purified. This luminous, lumin, luminosity is an indication that it can be purified, but one who does not know the method will not make an attempt to purify the mind. Attempt that we make to purify the mind is called meditation. We keep attempting, we keep trying to purify the mind. And we can purify it, we can make effort to purify it only if we know how. If we do not know, we just ignore it.
so uh, what are the four ways of uh, purifying the mind according to this discourse kaya kaya nupasi viharati one lives seeing the body in the body one lives seeing the feelings in the feeling one lives seeing consciousness in the consciousness one lives seeing the dhamma in the dhammas seeing the body in the body means uh, the the body mindfulness of the body is divided into six groups uh, and even the uh, even uh, uh, one of the six groups can be divided into many tiny little different parts and each part taken separately could be the body within the body kaya kaya anupasi body in the body means a particular part of the body in this big body that is why the body it is said body in the body that is for instance we go through various things later on uh, the breath for instance is a body it is called breath body within this big body that means when we become mindful of the body we learn to be mindful of any particular part when you isolate a part and look at it very closely with uh, full attention then uh, it is easy for us to understand that particular part instead of trying to grab like trying to grab the you know heap of orange it is easy to have few but if you try to grab the entire heap of orange uh, perhaps you may end up with a couple of orange similarly if you try to look at the entire body we may not be able you may not be able to see the body as it is but if you take a small part a fraction of it and then look at that particular part then you can see the details and that is why seeing the body in the body is mentioned that means taking one part of the body at one time and look at that part with mindfulness paying total attention until you become fully uh, you you fully understand that particular part then even if you don't go through the entire body you will have a knowledge of the nature of this body knowing the particular you can go to the general first particularize and then generalize not the other way around for this reason buddha put the be mindful of the body in the body similarly be mindful of the feelings or the feeling in the feelings you can select at any given moment whatever feeling you experience pay attention to that be mindful of it get full comprehension of that particular feeling and see the nature of that feeling then you can know any other feelings 
also are like this. And for this reason, he said, be mindful of the feeling in the feelings, Vedana Su, Vedana Nupasi Virati. Vedana Su is plural of Vedana. Vedana is singular, Vedana Su is dative, plural, noun. No, I'm sorry, locative, locative, plural, noun. Locative. Similarly, kaye kaya nupasi viharati. The body is not plural, body is one, but within this body there are parts. Similarly, chitte chitta nupasi viharati. Be mindful of the mind. In the mind, in the mind is uh, locative. And then, dhamme su, dhamma anupasi, dhamme su is plural, locative. Dhamma anupasi viharati lives being mindful of particular dhamma that you experience. So, at any given you can become mindful of particular aspect of dhamma, of numerous aspects of dhamma. And this is what we want to do with entire uh, discourse. Meaning, we will go through all these things in details. Uh, be mindful of the body, in the body, be mindful of the feelings, in the feelings, mindful of uh, mind of the mind, mindful of the Dhamma, of the Dhammas, or in the Dhammas. Uh, and this is our purpose. There are five purposes, fivefold purpose. For to achieve this fivefold purpose, this is the only way. What are the fivefold purpose? Now, when the retreat is over, you all should be able to memorize this discourse. you should be able to remember everything that I say, because things are here and we say something and we practice it. So, it must sink into our mind. Fivefold purpose, the purification of being, Satyanang Visuddhya, Second, Soka Paritdhavanang Samatikkamaya to overcome sorrow and lamentation. Dukkha Domanasanang Atthangamaya to overcome suffering and disappointment. Nyaya Sadhigamaya to realize, to attain the path or real again the wisdom. Nibbana Satchikiriyaya for realization of Nibbana. When you take each purpose separately and think, you can see how profound this discourse is. Just take first one, oh, purification of mind. Friends, for purifying the mind, how many things we do? How many things can we do to purify the mind? Can we purify the mind? <laughs> Can we purify it? Mm -hmm. eh? Try. <laughs> Try. We can purify the mind. What should we do to purify the mind? <laughs> eh? <laughs> Don't let defilement enter the mind. 
you cannot remove all the defilements which are already in the mind, but you can make them weak, ineffective, atrophy. Do not let them become strong, powerful, do not strengthen them. We do not worry about the past defilements. We try not to let new defilements pile up in our mind. That is, we build a buffer, a dam against new defilement entering the mind. We have to start now for future purification. We cannot remove the past ones. But we can weaken the past one and we will be able to uh, put a lid, seal over the past and start now to purify the mind from future defilements. So, Satyanam Vishuddhya. That means we become mindful from now on for future purification. We cannot be mindful of what has happened in the past. All the defilements we committed in the defilement we piled up in our mind because we have not been mindful in the past. What we have not done is we cannot do it. What is un, what is done is cannot be undone when we have not been mindful yesterday, today we cannot do anything about that, but we can be mindful from now on. So, purify the mind. Second, uh, we, a, as our mindfulness deepen, we will see very clearly how c we can uh, minimize, reduce our uh, sorrow and lamentation by reducing, chipping off little by little of our greed, our clinging, craving, attachment. Do not try to remove it right away, but slowly when we work, as our insight develops, increases, strengthen to that degree and extent our greed slowly becomes weak and that is how we learn to overcome our uh, sorrow and lamentation. And also our suffering due to our uh, greed, attachment, can be minimize, reduce by practicing mindfulness, reducing our greed. And the mind, Noble Eightfold Path slowly unfolds within us. Noble, noble Eightfold Path you cannot find in books. It is not drawn on the road, on, on, this, on the land. The road is already in us. So, when we, when we train to be mindful, the road uh, that is within us slowly begins to unfold. And for that we have to be mindful. Only through mind, mindfulness is the key to open the gate on this road. As we become mindful, the path slowly unfolds, opens itself. We do not have to do anything, just be mindful, the road will be open to us. And then that road gradually takes us to Nibbana. Where is that? <laughs> Where is Nibbana? The moment all these 
defilements vanish in our mind. Nibbana is there. That moment. Don't try to go to Nibbana. As we normally say, I want to go to Nibbana. By try, but try to realize Nibbana. <coughs> try to do what you have to do here and now to remove whatever blocks our attainment of Nibbana, remove those blockade, those stumbling blocks, those uh, what you call uh, hurdles. Once the hurdles are removed, you are there. Don't try to go anywhere physically or psychologically. The key to that is mindfulness. Four foundations of mindfulness. And that is why Buddha with boldly, you know, with, with the bold attitude, with courage, with, uh, any has, without any hesitation, said this is the only direct way to attain that state. That is unfolding Nibbana within ourselves. Don't try to find Nibbana anywhere. Don't ask anybody to give you Nibbana, enlighten you. <laughs> you can find it within yourself only when you practice this. So friends, we try as hard as possible during this week to remain mindful every moment. Honestly try to focus your mind on your own body, your feelings, your perceptions, consciousness, any mental activity like thoughts. No matter what thought it is, just pay mindful attention to it. Mindful attention is the attention without greed, hatred and delusion. When attention is going to be blocked by greed, remove the greed. When attention is going to be confused by your Confusion, remove the confusion. When attention is going to be affected by hatred, remove the hatred and keep pure simple attention. Pay that attention to your own experiences during this short period and see how your mind becomes clearer and clearer and clearer and things, wonderful, noble things that you have within yourself begin to unfold for you to see what a treasure you have within yourself and how you slowly get closer to Nibbana. Look at yourself. And let us see, as we go through the discourse every day, we will get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.